Ben Shapiro's reaction to the mass shooting that claimed the lives of 19 elementary school kids and two teachers in Uvalde, Texas, was to claim that gun legislation would have done nothing to save those kids. Nothing, it would, nothing. And when he was making this point, he did so by lying to the very people who follow him on Twitter. Let me explain. So he tweeted, the Texas shooter violated multiple gun laws. The suggestion that more gun laws would have prevented this act of unspeakable evil is unsupported, he says. And the implication that those who oppose such laws are somehow in favor of mass shootings is morally reprehensible. Well, let me be morally reprehensible and accuse people like you of that. Because rather than focusing on the actual solutions to prevent this from happening, you provide cover for the bad guys. Ben Shapiro always provides cover for the bad guys. You know, in my mind, Ben Shapiro is a classic conservative, right? The the pre-Trump conservative in America who I disagree with, but at least you can have a debate or a conversation with. But in the Trump era, he decided to provide cover for neo-Nazis. He decided to provide cover for the Republican Party after the Buffalo massacre that was inspired by the rhetoric that spouted by mainstream Republican politicians about white replacement theory. Ben, stop providing cover for murderers in this country. And go ahead and call me morally reprehensible. I would argue what's definitely morally reprehensible, what's actually morally reprehensible is providing cover for murderers on behalf of gun manufacturers. I think you're immoral. But he also lied because he said that the Texas shooter violated all sorts of gun laws. Did he Ben? Did he? Where did you read about that? Because it turns out he didn't violate a single gun law. I mean, he's in Texas, what gun law? You can carry a gun without a permit in Texas. What gun law are you referring to? No, the gunman bought the weapons legally. He didn't break a single gun law, not one, not one. The gunman purchased two AR platform rifles in the week before the shooting, as well as 375 rounds of ammunition. One of the assault rifles was left in a truck that was found crashed near the elementary school, while the other rifle, referred to in the briefing as a Daniel defense, was found in the school with the gunman along with at least 30 round magazines. He purchased two AR platform rifles at a local federal firearms licensee on May 17th and also on May 20th. He also bought the ammunition, 375 rounds of ammunition on May 18th. So this month alone, he bought a ton of weaponry and ammunition to carry out the slaughter of 19 kids and two teachers. But people like Ben are, you know, for the most part, shielded from this kind of stuff. I'm sure he can send his kids to private schools. He doesn't have to worry about this as much as other parents do. So as long as the check's clear, and as long as he can continue building his career off of providing cover for the worst people in this country, who cares? I'll even lie to my followers. Unbelievably disgusting, that's morally reprehensible. To say, no, we shouldn't do anything about guns because I'm gonna now lie to everyone who follows me by telling them that there were gun laws that were broken in this case is I think that's morally reprehensible. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. You guys tell me. The gunman was also sending photos of his weapons to random people on Instagram, telling them that he's got a secret days before the shooting. We also learned that the shooter sent private messages to a girl that he met online in Germany. So he told her, her name, she's going by Cece, I guess. He told her via private messages on Facebook, I'm gonna shoot my grandmother. He sent that message 30 minutes before he shot his grandmother in the face. The gunman, by the way, this is wrong. So this has been updated. He did not post it on his Facebook account. It was private messages, which is why I don't wanna read that graphic. But what's been confirmed is that he sent the private messages to this girl. 
30 minutes before shooting his grandmother. He also told her, I'm gonna shoot up the school. And she didn't know if he was being serious. Look, I don't wanna be too hard on this girl. I mean, I wish she would have reported it. She says that she wishes she would have reported it, but she didn't think he was serious. And it turns out he was very serious. We have just this dangerous combination in this country where guns are everywhere, they're easily accessible, anyone can get their hands on them. You don't even have to go through a federal background check if you buy the guns in, in certain ways, whether it's through private dealers or a gun show. In Texas, you don't even need a permit to carry, blows my mind. And then on top of that, we have all these other crises. Yeah, we do have a mental health crisis. I mean, Republicans never really wanna fund it or do anything about it. In fact, they actively blocked funding for mental health care multiple times. More recent example was blocking social spending that was proposed by Democrats in the Build Back Better agenda. So we have a mental health crisis. We have a lot of people living in despair. And I don't think that it's a surprise that we have so many young men carrying out these crimes. I'm not trying to be an apologist for them. I'm not providing any excuses for them. There is no excuse. But when you live in a country that tells you over and over again, no one's looking out for you and there's really not much to live for. There's really not much to look forward to. Again, pretty dangerous combination. And then you have that added layer of insane lunatics in the mainstream Republican Party calling for civil war, calling for violence. I mean, here, I got a perfect example for you right now. Let's go to Representative Randy Fine in the state of Florida, okay, elected lawmaker in the state of Florida. Here's what he had to say. I have news for the embarrassment that claims to be our president, he says. Try to take our guns and you'll learn why the second amendment was written in the first place. You threatening the president with assassination? Is that what you're doing? I mean, if, if Republican lawmakers and if conservatives wanna tell me, you can't just focus on gun legislation, it's gotta be more comprehensive than that. I'm more than willing to have that conversation. But the problem is, whenever there's a mass shooting, they'll point to all the other scapegoats, right? So that they can deflect and not have to talk about doing anything that would hurt the gravy train that comes from these weapons manufacturers. They don't wanna do a damn thing. They don't wanna do anything about healthcare. They're not gonna curb their disgusting violent rhetoric and they're not gonna do a damn thing about guns. So one side is kind of offering some solutions, very meek about it, very meek. Can we maybe do something about gun control maybe? And then the other side is vicious. They don't wanna do a damn thing. So mark my words, more children will be slaughtered in this country. Because again, America is not the land of liberty or freedom. America is the land of death and destruction, both within our borders and certainly outside our borders with the foreign policy that we champion. I'm embarrassed to be an American, I am. And I hate saying that because I wanna feel pride. But how do you feel pride when you see this day in, day out?